Welcome back to the Brewbot development series, in which I click on buttons until hopefully a video game happens. Last week, we improved the combat quite a bit by making Brewbot able to be damaged and killed. And this week, I want to get the combat basics completed, starting with something that one of you guys suggested, which is shrinking down the player hitbox slightly to make it feel more fair and precise. And you know what? Let's put another attempt in on that awful walk animation. Another suggestion I got last week was that I should have the arms and legs move opposite to each other, which should be easy enough to fix. Alright, you know, in a few more months, this animation's gonna look great. It looks okay in-game, but it kinda looks like he's kicking rather than running. I think it's cause his legs aren't swinging back far enough compared to how far they go forward. So I fixed that and re-imported the model which meant I had to replace just the keyframes on the old walk animation, as not to get rid of the flash red animation when replacing the whole animation player. If anybody knows how you're actually supposed to re-import animations, please tell me. Yeah, that's somewhat better. The animation still is a bit glitchy, but I'll fix that later. Maybe in Brewbot 2 or a DLC or something. For now, let's focus on the combat, which has been very cube-based so far. And as much as I love fighting default shapes, I think it's time to get our moss ball enemy out of storage and make some animations. All I want right now are animations for idle and walking. Unfortunately, he wasn't very well rigged or weight painted, so I had to work on that a little bit first. Now I can move his center around without anything disconnecting anywhere. That, in combination with the eyes and leaf being able to move, is going to help add a lot of motion and personality to these animations. The idle animation, for example, is just a simple three frame dip down and then return back up. But this is where I can use the eyes and leaf and stuff to make this look a little more detailed. Now I'll we'll have to figure out a walking animation. This was hard enough to do on Brewbot, which is a humanoid character, but whatever this guy is ain't even a real thing, so we're gonna have to come up with something that looks correct, I guess. And as it turns out, that actually made it easier, because there isn't a great familiarity with how this guy should walk, so I have a lot more leeway than with a human walking animation. I think that'll do it. Let's get this model and animations exported and thrown into Godot. Then I can delete the cube mesh and bring in the moss ball mesh. I'm gonna have to disable the getting hurt and dying animations since they won't carry over from the cube. Then I can type a few lines that make him play the walk animation when he has velocity and the idle animation otherwise. And already this works mostly how I want it to, but they do float sometimes. And also they sometimes do whatever this is. Let's go ahead and make that flash red animation and test it out. Well, they got worse, and the animation doesn't work. It looks like the reason they're glitching around on the floor is because they're trying to return home, which is too high or too low. So I updated the script a bit, and now it works great. Whatever, I'll fix it later. Let's fix the flash red animation first. I realize the reason that this isn't working is because I'm trying to call this animation while he's already in either walking or idle. So we need to make an animation tree again. Man, at least I kind of know how to make them now, so I mean it wasn't confusing, it was just miserable. And broken. Oh, not broken. Half broken. There should be a way to loop animations, so I searched around for where specifically in Tarnation that is. Apparently, it's right here. Looks like that did it, but they all flash red at once when you hit one of them, which is because I need to check on that make local to scene option. Well, this is working pretty good, and I'm not too bad at fighting these guys. It's like they can't even hit me at all. Dang. Turns out I had their physics collision hitbox the same exact size as their damage hitbox, so I've just got to scale the physics one down a little bit. And now they are actually able to hit me, and I went ahead and let them kill me on purpose to, uh, test the death animation again. But actually, it looks like they do get stuck on me whenever they try to walk back to their spawn. I spent quite a while trying to fix how these guys work, but it pretty much always resulted in super curse stuff happening that was never anything like what I was trying to do. To fix the laying on the floor thing, I just forced their X rotation to always be zero, which isn't the most elegant solution, but it does work really well. It also means they don't fly around anymore, which is good, but they do still get stuck on stuff when trying to return home. My first idea was to detect if he was blocked and make him stop walking if he was, but that straight up didn't work at all. So I tried thinking of something, and that wasn't going too well, so I resorted to ChatGPT, which gave me a good way to check if an object is stuck. And sure enough, it prints to the console when he hits a wall and can't move anymore. Now I'll make it so that when he's stuck, he can jump up over the wall and into orbit. So I nerfed that a bit, and you know what? He won't stop jumping. Also, when they return home, they do this weird jellyfish thing. It looks like they think they're stuck, so they start jumping. So I made them ignore the vertical Y axis, so they're fine being above or below their home point. And that fixed it. 
These guys are kind of like actual enemies now. They even jump when you go near them, which I didn't program them to do, but hey, I'll take it. I think I want to nerf their jump height a little bit though, so I'll take it from 5 down to 2. But now they can't quite jump up here, so I type some stuff that should make them jump extra high if the low jumps just aren't working. And sure enough, that's exactly what happens. Although I might want to stop them from jumping over each other while they chase you. Then again, I might not, it's pretty funny. Something I can fix real quick is that if dead statement that I put all of my movement code in. Some of you guys let me know that I can actually do this in a much more simple way. Instead, I can put that if dead statement below the physics section, which does a return if true, which prevents the rest of the script from running. And luckily, that didn't make everything fall apart. I can still respawn and everything. Although, I'd like to improve the death animation. Or even better, add some ragdoll physics. Given my record animating, that's probably the best option. So here's my idea. I want to have an invisible, physics-based version of Brewbot, which is invisible at all times and not simulating physics, until you die. Then the controllable character model disappears and stops simulating as the ragdoll version is swapped in and activated. Of course, I don't know how to do any of that in the script, so I had to look a bunch of stuff up. But it seems like it'll be relatively easy. Disabling the visuals and physics for an object are each only one line, and it's only four lines total to swap the alive brewbot for the dead one. And still I managed to type two of them wrong. So let's fix that and see what we've got. Heck yeah. It's not quite a ragdoll though, it's more like a crowbar falling over. Also the camera doesn't really follow you. That took a minute to fix. But I did figure it out, and the camera does follow him properly, no matter how far away he rolls. Well, looks like it's back to lead game designer ChatGPT for some help. I've got to figure out how to make his arms go all noodly whenever you die. So I guess I've got to put Brewbot's skeleton here instead of just the mesh. Then I've got to create a physics skeleton out of that, which is what's going to do the funny noodle stuff. Then I can launch it up and see what happens when you let ChatGPT make your game for you. No, actually, I just forgot to disable his physics. Now that that's fixed, we're able to reach the next issue. Turns out, the way you start simulating physics on a physical skeleton uses a different line of code. And... Is it just me, or is it getting worse whenever I fix it? So, I mean, yeah, this doesn't look great. But technically, this is ragdoll physics. They just aren't working right. Whoa. After studying the way that this works, it looks like there's some of the mesh that isn't parented to any bone, so it isn't connected to the rest properly. It also looks like enemies can jump on top of your head and you can't do anything about it. Man, these features really just make themselves. So I went ahead and added those parts of the mesh to the body bone, and freaked out for a second because I thought I broke all the animations. Turns out I had some weird checkbox on somewhere that breaks all your animations. Now let's get it imported and set back up all over again. Okay, better. But there's a circle that I forgot, so I'll go ahead and add that in too. Now there's no floating circle, but it still looks super weird. I tried messing around with the settings on the joints, but the output log says no. After a little bit of perusing, I found that you can change the joint type to a cone, and you can narrow that down so that he has less range of motion. Let's see how that works. I don't even know. Like, I think that's good, but I'm not gonna give it a round of applause or anything. Maybe we need to add some knockback to it. Kinda throw him a little bit. I made a script on the ragdoll, which basically just reuses the sections that the player script has to receive and process knockback from enemies. And I gotta say, this doesn't work at all. Until it really, really, really does. Something about the way I'm doing this is just wrong. I think the signal system was causing some kind of a delay, and I actually got my first ever crash while testing this, so I must have done something wrong. So I got rid of all of that stupid signal stuff that I don't need at all, and just took the knockback value straight from the player like I should have done in the first place. And now we have proper knockback, which I would say really sells the ragdoll physics. I would if it actually worked consistently. Turns out that angle was the single angle that the knockback works in, which sent me on a wild goose chase thinking it was some kind of 3D directional thing I had gotten wrong, since that's what I've screwed up the most so far in this project, aside from the walking animation. I tried making a ball that rolls away that he then follows, which is how you know I was at my wit's end. Well, turns out it has nothing to do with vectors or directions. It was his shoes being too grippy. Actually, I just had to mess with the friction on some of the joints, and I got much better physics. It's not consistently predictable, but it is consistently funny. And at the end of the day, that's the whole point of having ragdoll physics like this. But there were a few times he literally flew toward the enemy instead of away, so let's see if we can do something about that. 
I tried adjusting the knockback angle a few degrees upward to get him up off the ground, since I think it is still some kind of ground friction thing making him glitch out. I also tried raising the ragdoll up off the ground slightly, which does help keep the direction of knockback more consistent. Well that's working very well. Now I've got to figure out how to make fighting enemies as fun as it is to get killed by them, which is going to be pretty difficult. Well, I think that's gonna do it for this week. We got a lot done. Not only can enemies kill you, but now it's the best part of the game. I think next week, I'm gonna get back into Delfino Square and see if I can't make it a little spookier. But after that, we'll get back to this, try to make the combat a little more satisfying. Maybe I'll add another attack that Brubot can do and get the coffee bean system working and possibly have another jab at that walking animation. Who knows? Well, anyways, I'll talk to you next time. Thanks.